Hello, and welcome to Developer Day 2025. I'm Jeff Barr, a VP and Chief Evangelist for AWS. So I've been building things with code for well over 40 years. Some days I definitely feel like a dinosaur, but over that time, I've just seen so many advances in tools and languages, methodologies and processes. And what I've noticed is that each one of these is revolutionary and perhaps even a bit controversial at first, because as developers, we're often skeptics of, of new things. But as each of these advances matures, it proves its worth, we see that usage spreads, and then ultimately at, at some point it becomes somewhat ubiquitous and we suddenly figure out like, we have a hard time actually realizing how did we ever do our jobs without the, these new, new things. So wh when I look back, I realize that even things that are now so kind of simple and totally obvious, like using a higher level language to write an operating system or a compiler. There was a time early in my career where people said, you know what, the only way to do something as as deep and complex as an operating system, you have to use assembly language. There's no way you could ever use a higher level language. It's, it's just too inefficient. It's impractical, never going to work. That, of course, was proven wrong with portable operating systems like, like um, Unix and its predecessor, Multics. And so we, we, we do have to get used to this idea that things actually change quite a bit in our industry. Now, today, we see that generative AI is driving these these large scale changes to the way that we work and of course to, to what we build. I'm, I'm, as I speak to a lot of developers, and I, I recently have been spending a lot of time in front of developers at community days and, and meetups and so forth, people are seeing all these great changes. They're excited by them. They're saying, wow, this gives me some new power, some new capabilities. But they're a little bit kind of wondering, like, where do I fit in? What's my role in this? I, I don't, they're saying, I, I don't want to be left behind. I don't want to just be kind of like a, a dinosaur fossil at some point, kind of left behind by, by history. H how do I actually make sure that, I, that I'm staying current, that I'm actually tracking toward the future? Today's that day where you actually get to step into the future. We're going to give you some guidance that you're going to use to help you develop your skills and to really just to understand and to thrive in this really new and exciting world. You're going to get to see things in action. You're going to get to see Amazon Q Developer. You can get to see some other other of the AI tools running. And you're going to actually get to learn how to use these coding assistants to help you to accomplish your goals. I, I always want to remind you that you are the one in charge. You're the one writing the prompts. You're the one saying, this is my problem. This is how I want to go up solving it, asking your coding assistant. And it is an assistant. It's there to help you to get your job done. Never, ever forget that. Now, as part of this, you're going to see some of the tools have this feature called agentic capabilities. Kind of a, a new kind of a phrase, but I want it, you to pay close attention to that today. You'll see that the agents inside of Amazon Q Developer, they're going to help you to accelerate your tasks, things like upgrading your Java application, adding a new feature to an existing application, all without a whole lot of interaction or inter intervention from you. Now, what I've realized a lot with, with these new, new tools, you, you can... You can read about them, you can watch a video, you can hear your colleagues talk about them, that, that's okay. But what you really need to do is you need to actually log in, go hands-on, solve your own problems with these tools. There's, there, there's no substitute for actually watching the magic of these tools in action, seeing the, you know, put, putting in your prompt, seeing that output spew out after it does a little bit of thinking, looking at that output, giving some feedback, iterating, then you actually get that dynamic feel for what it's like to actually be part of a development session by while you're using your coding assistant. It, it, the, the experience can be described, but is best absolutely experienced firsthand. So, so make sure that you actually do go hands-on with, with all these at your absolute earliest possible opportunity. Now, what, one part of, of using Gen AI is something that we call prompt engineering, where you actually get to write the text that ultimately tells your coding assistant, this is the problem I want to solve, and this is the guidance I want to give you to help me solve my problem. My colleagues, Darko and Kobus, they're going to go really in-depth on prompt engineering, showing you how to write prompts that actually reflect your requirements. As, as I've been speaking to developers lately, one thing that we're really, it's becoming very, very clear is that the skill of understanding problems in depth and being an incredibly good communicator, being able to, as we've always worked to make sure that we understand our programming languages, we want to understand our 
of course, the, the syntax and the semantics and the, the data types and the, the standard libraries of our programming language that we use. And we, we say, let's, let's become incredibly good at knowing that vocabulary and using it to communicate with code. It turns out that writing awesome prompts means that we need to be good at communicating with human languages. So regardless of what language you're going to write your prompt in and some of the tools you might actually say, well, Maybe, maybe I'm not even going to write my prompt in English. I'll write it in my, my preferred natural language. And I'll, as part of my development workflow, I'll just ask another AI agent to translate it for me. Regardless of the language you're going to express your prompts in, the ability to understand your problem in depth and to skillfully and accurately challenge the coding assistant to help you, that's, that's a skill that is, is absolutely worth developing. So uh, one, one, another thing that I'm thinking about a lot is in, in the past, we used to have this phrase that, that we used a lot called self-documenting code. Things like having a nice, clean program structure, good names for our, our functions and our methods and our variables and our data types and so forth. Uh, lots of great formatting so that everything is just clear and obvious, basically to ourselves and to our colleagues, the purpose for a particular piece of code. So we thought of that, that self-documenting code as, as basically kind of we're writing for the humans to make sure that the humans that come along after us were the initial developer, then a whole bunch of folks come in later to, to look at what we've built and say, wow, this person either knew or didn't know what they were doing. Let me take it from here and let me move it forward for the, the next round of, of upgrades and features and so forth. So that, that self-documenting code is, is our, kind of our, our best attempt at trying to say, let, let's make everything really clear. And we said, well, that, that is for the humans and the code is for the computer. As I start to think about Gen AI and prompt writing, th this phrase came to mind to me earlier this week that uh, instead of self-documenting code, what if we think of these prompts as effectively self-coding documentation? We're, we're writing the prompt, which is kind of the documentation for the problem that we'd like to solve and how we want to solve it. And then we're going to turn to our AI assistant and say, take this documentation and turn it into some, some code for me. So I, I, to me, this is definitely living in the future where we're, we're writing these, we're, we're going to get really good at writing awesome prompts. We're going to give the, our coding tools some guidance along the way. We're going to iterate as, as we go. You'll, you'll see some great examples of that today, right, right from this very, very desk. And we'll go from, from that prompt to the code to something up and running really, really quickly. So bringing these ideas to life is going to be just simpler and easier together. So for today, what do we have on, on Stack for you today? Well, we've got tons of live hands-on demos for you. We're going to show you how to use Gen AI to accelerate manual tasks of all, all sorts. Now, let's really face it. Some of these manual tasks are not even things we actually enjoy doing as developers. Modernization, transformation. I'm sure some of you wake up every day and say, wow, I want to modernize, I want to transform. But sometimes it just sounds kind of like you're just kind of stepping through some mud and leaving some, some footprints and fossils for the future. Not nearly as exciting as creating awesome, cool things from scratch. But modernizing and transforming, that's kind of the bread and butter, the things you really, really need to do to, 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 to be a developer these days. But we're, you're going to learn how you can modernize and transform really quickly at lightning speed. You're also going to see about ways you're going to use Q developer to diagnose and troubleshoot things like operational issues and inefficiencies and so forth. Super excited for today. I'm going to be listening behind the scenes the entire day. I'm going to make a whole bunch of notes. I, I along with you, I'm going to be listening and, and learning. And I'm going to do my best to, as I do, move myself into the future. Definitely don't want to become a, 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 di a dinosaur. I definitely don't want to go extinct. So don't change the channel. And here we go. Stay tuned for the rest of Developer Day.